And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Rodgers now on first down. And his first look is incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Play action, Rodgers. And this is caught, it's Jimmy Graham. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Two former All-Pros connecting, Rodgers fighting his tight end, Graham. Packer first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. On play action, now Rodgers. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on go offense ahead, if go, that go. fell harmlessly to the ground. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now a play fake, Rodgers, rolling to his right. Now look out, Rodgers, lost the football, and this belongs to the Vikings. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk-reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit, and in this case, lose the football. Right. Should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the safe play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never wrong, is it? Because you can analyze it, but I think ultimately you've got to look at it as a first option, taking care of the ball, getting what you can, and that's it. Don't worry about it anymore. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Kenny Clark busting through to get him for a loss of six. Two plays so far, a run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So on fourth down, they bring on the Michigan man, Matt Wilde, to kick it away. Back deep is Trevor Davis. Green Bay Packers getting the ball back here. But I wanted to ask you to kind of assess 2018 for them because you think back to the midway point, they're under 500. Even some of their wins have been, I don't know if you want to call it a little uninspiring, but what do you Good make word. of their season? Good word because Chicago had to come back and that was Aaron Rodgers coming back from injury in that game to win that one on opening night. San Francisco at home on a Monday night game. I thought they'd blow them away and they really struggled in that one. But the better teams that they've played, They've played them very tough, been very competitive, haven't been able to get over the hump against them. 
Here's the question now. Are they wasting number 12's best years? Talk about Aaron Rodgers. Do they have the right personnel around him? They drafted three rookie receivers this year, waiting for them to make an impact to try and supplant or supplement the guys they already have. They need those guys to get going and in a hurry. Rodgers again here on second and 10. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Looking deep downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Back deep is Marcus Sherrills. Pulled in at the 24. <laughs> a nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Charles, as Minnesota takes the field here, let me get your thoughts on what you think of them coming down the stretch. The, the one and three start. We talked about their start last year, too. But is this a team that is being overlooked by others in the NFL right now? I don't think so. I think that the teams that they're playing know how capable the Vikings are, and they realize that not only is the defense starting to get back to what they were last season, but that Kirk Cousins is getting more and more comfortable with the weapons he has at his disposal. I think maybe we in the media on the outside are overlooking them a little bit because they've taken some losses to some significant teams so far this season. But I think down the stretch, you mentioned their start last year. They were 2-2 two and two to start last year, 1-3 and three this year. They know how to put together a string, and this team could be dangerous come December. Yeah, and they've looked a lot better since that one and three start. Cousins on first down. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now Cousins. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The six-time Pro Bowler, Clay Matthews. And it'll be third down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And he's able to find Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs. 46 yards, and the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. Bailey got the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. Bailey now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. 
And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. drive. The punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field, and that brings up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he powers his way up past the 30. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Sheldon Richardson able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Sheryls. A good return there, 17 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And it's a welcome back to hell for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Josh Jones in on the stop. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Play fake. Cousins, rush coming, and he's taken down. Nick Perry, not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Cousins now to throw on first down. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They give him a gain of 38. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play on the football. They'll run with Cook. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They get it to him running left. 
And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. now to kick this one away. Trevor Davis now to return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. First down, Rodgers over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. And this one's gonna go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two, now third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what, if you're going to do that, you've gotta win up front, right? Your offensive guys have gotta beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. to throw on third down. Rodgers, he's got Adams on the hookup. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. Well, that didn't take very long. You mentioned you have to keep him under wraps. Avoid the big play is what you said, and here he makes one of the first quarter. Yeah, you can't let this become a habit. Otherwise, you know what'll happen? They'll flat out take over this game. 319! Rodgers now on first down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Sheldon Richardson able to get in there and drop him for a two-yard loss. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. The Packers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Man open, it's St. Brown, he's got it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. They go back to the ground with Jones. And he'll take this one down near the 15. 
Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. Early down stuffs will put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. On second down, it's Jones. And he's brought down. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. at the two now. Here's second and goal. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. Touchdown, Packers! Jimmy Graham, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. Aaron Rodgers no longer has a safety blanket named Jordy Nelson to utilize in the red zone anymore. But picking up Jimmy Graham, that's a heck of a consolation prize. Remember, Jimmy Graham has had four seasons of 10 touchdowns or more, including 10 with the Seahawks in 2017. Crosby with the extra point, and that'll make our score 14 to 7. Crosby on now to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They go play action here on first down. Packer pressure and down he goes. Nick Perry in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Four down, four down. They go play action. Cousins. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 17. From the gun, here's Cousins. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And now it's the punter Weil on as he sends this one away. <laughs> Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. 
And now the Packers get set to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Rodgers now on first down. And he finds Randall Cobb with a completion. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. On play action, Rodgers. Got an open man, it's Valdez Scantling. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. Open man right side of St. Brown. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Rodgers to throw once more. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Rodgers will bring him up to the line, first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Rodgers to throw on second down. His throw caught at about the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Marquez Valdez Scantling from three yards out. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower. Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. 
What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. to the ground this time cook and the play goes nowhere losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down the evolution of clay matthews as a player it's just one that they're going to end up writing books about he didn't even start until his senior year at usc he didn't start in high school and now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Well, that was better than the first go-around when he lost yardage, but still nothing there, and that sets up a third and long. Tough spot here. Put it mildly, sometimes I wonder if some of that old-school football should come back into play. You know what I would think here? Quick kick. Try and change field position. Help out your team. On third down, Cousins. And that is incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Matt Wild now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. And now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Now Rodgers on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, Charles, a year ago at this time, I asked you what your Thanksgiving plans were. So I got a funny answer out of you last year. I'm going to ask you again, what are you doing for Thanksgiving this year? I'm trying to figure out exactly what time I kick everyone out of my house so I can just <laughs> hunker down and watch what's left of the football schedule. That's what I want to know. Oh, come on. Your mother-in-law is coming in. It's going to be a great time at the Davis household. Well, she can stay as long as she wants. She's family. But everyone else, get they, out. Have, they have an expiration time. What about the dogs? 50-50. Depends <laughs> on how they act that day. Well, when things go awry, you can just get in the car and head out for the airport because you got a game that weekend. I certainly do. I will be headed to Charlotte, Seattle at Carolina that Sunday. Looking forward to that one. But even while I'm jesting a little bit about people being at the house, some of you I'm not jesting about. Hurry up and get out. Following the penalty, it's Williams. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. He'll get two yards back, but it's going to leave him with a long third and 13. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On third and long, it's Rodgers. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. A well, third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. 51 yards on the punt there. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now come the Vikings. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. 
Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second down, Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. First down, here's the run with Cook. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. Now he'll escape to his left. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, and his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. On first down, Murray. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Oh, boy, I know you felt that one. I know you felt that one. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And he's got his man on the out route. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Open man is stealing his complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first. And Rudolph has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph from four yards out. And the Vikings are going to take the lead. While Washington, Kirk Cousins had the pleasure of throwing to Jordan Reed at tight end for the last few seasons. And now that he's moved to Minnesota, he has Kyle Rudolph, who may not be quite as athletic as Jordan Reed, but still has excellent hands and knows how to make plays in the red zone. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And the lead is now 21-14. Bailey now to kick this one away. 
This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. To throw is Rodgers. He's going to float this one deep right side. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Trey Wayne's the Michigan State man right there in coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. 319! Rodgers again here on second and 10. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. The Packers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. And again, it's Rodgers. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Cobb. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. here on first down and oh look at that a diving catch and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. He gets it over the middle to Cobb. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And Crosby puts it through and high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half.
After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. Here comes Sheryls. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and 10. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here on a Thanksgiving night. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, it's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. He's going to look deep down the field. He's got a man complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A gain of 32 that time. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Off the play fake, Cousins. He's going to loft one deep left. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jair Alexander. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Rodgers gives this to Jamal Williams, and he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Back near the goal line, here's Rodgers. And avoids the contact by sliding. Give him seven on the play, and they're going to have a third down. The Packers on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Rodgers. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's J.K. Scott now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out comes Minnesota. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. 
Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Kevin King with a pick. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Again, it's Williams. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. On play action, it's Rodgers. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Anthony Barr in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Try to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. <laughs> Cook following the penalty. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. That was second down run for Murray. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and 10. 
In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Clay Matthews in there to get him for his second sack of the night. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. On first down, Rodgers. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. That next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed ahead, and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. On second down, Williams looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Andrew Sendejo in on the stop. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now it's Rodgers. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now, there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now, that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And now out comes Minnesota. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. To say they've kept him under wraps running the football, that, that's an understatement. He's been completely neutralized. Yeah, they've essentially taken him out of the game, haven't they? And you know all the teams say, we're not going to let him beat us? Well, that's exactly what's happened here. They've lived up to that. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Cousins now on second down. 
The left side caught by Diggs. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing and communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And the third down pass falls incomplete. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Matt Weil now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. He'll take it at the 42. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Packers will have a short field to work with here as they take over first and 10. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for his running back, Jamal Williams. And that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Rodgers will try again on second down. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. He don't want to throw away this excellent field position, but that's two incomplete passes in a row. Definitely needs something big here on third and ten. Conversely, defense has done a good job on first and second down. The coverage has been draped. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And that will be incomplete as well. Trey Waynes, the Michigan State man, right there in coverage. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He connected on his first, this from 41. And Crosby puts it through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. Here comes Sherrills. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now try and wind down some clock with Cook. 
And he'll be dropped at the 30. But a shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. A Vikings first down. Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Cousins now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Time to ground it out now with Murray. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. Right, if you get go. strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Second down, Cousins. And Cook has it, left side. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll bring up a third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Back to the ground, Cook. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Vikings on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon. And right now, they're almost lifeless. And he's heating up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They run it again with Cook. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Vikings on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This will be third and five. From the gun, here's Cousins. 
And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. The Vikings after it, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter able to drop him for a loss of a couple. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. On second down, here's Rodgers. Quick throw. That's complete on the inside slam. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. They'll try and run for it with Jones. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A first down throw for Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Laquan Treadwell. That'll bring up second down. Now not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Kevin King with a pick. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides. So I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. That's anytime right. we that's have a right. defensive battle. But that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big... Oh, this is blocked. This is going the other way. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. I remember when they changed the rule 
And there's a lot of consternation, especially coming from the kickers. Okay, how's this going to affect things, having to kick a longer one now? Much more of a field goal attempt. And the defensive guys saw it as an opportunity to get more block. That's exactly right. There's more effort now. Before, when it was stepped down near the goal line, you would basically see guys just stand there. Yeah, not anymore. Now, those guys are going after it because not only can they knock it away and change a little bit of momentum, they can, get two points. They can pick it up and take it back for two points. Back to it after the pick six. Cousin lets it fly for Thielen. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play there. Cousins to Thielen. And even 50 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's. And, that's it. and the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And this will be incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and forever. To throw is Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Vikings. Kyle Rudolph, his second touchdown of the night. And the Vikings have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Bailey now for the extra point. Bailey got the extra point, and the lead is up to five. Bailey now to kick this one away. Returnable here for Davis. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Rodgers now on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cobb. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And Graham's got it, complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second down. It's caught outright by Graham. And he'll be brought down at the 45 yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. He's back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. He'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Back to throw. This is Cobb with a catch right side. Oh, no, he lost the football. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. They'll look to throw. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. To throw is Rodgers. And that is incomplete. Great hands there defensively to knock the ball away in the end zone. My partner just stood up. It's fourth and goal and the game coming down to one play. And there's no way you're getting me back down there again. They have to do it one more time. This is exciting. Glad you remembered to come back on Mike for this. Now Rodgers, got to have this one. And no, it's incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. They start the drive with Cook. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. As it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two.
Again, it's Cook. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. And now the Packers going to take another timeout as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. <laughs> 